G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in Brooklyn, New York City, and today I'm doing an updated video on the best boots for under $300 because as you may have noticed, the prices of commodities have increased of late, especially in the world of boots actually. Like every other company is running out of leather, which for some reason is especially hard hit by the market these days. And a lot of boots on my last list of the best boots for under 300 bucks are no longer under 300 bucks. So Parkhurst is out, Grant Stone is out, Wyatt's is out, the list needs a real update. So there are still plenty of good boots under 300 bucks. What am I looking for when I'm talking about best boots under 300 bucks? I'm largely focusing on boots that are resolable and water resistant so they can last you many years and many soles. So that's a good year while construction or just something resolable like like Blake Stitches and Stitch Down can still usually be resold, so I'm not disqualifying those. Also just like quality leather and versatility is something I really value a lot as well. I like boots you can wear with like a lot of outfits, be it date night or under torn jeans and a t-shirt in the bar. So without any further ado, the first boot is also one that came first on the last video of boots under 300 bucks because this company is somehow inflation proof. They haven't changed their prices since the company launched. This is the Vanguard boot from Thursday Boot Company. This guy is $265 and it's fully made in America. So this is this really is a really good steal for the price. My pair are the Burnt Copper Vanguards. I actually took them all over Jordan and Lebanon a while ago. I really put them through the paces and they really held up to the damage. They're terrific boots, they're resolvable, they're water resistant. They're very tough, they made this very oily kind of leather that is really uh, doesn't need very much care. And they're versatile as well. This is like a nice dress boot, work boot hybrid that goes with just about anything. And they come in a ton of different leathers as well. So you can get Halloween's Chrome XL if you want a really American kind of boot because that's America's most beloved leather tannery and it might be the most popular boot leather on earth. And also if 265 bucks is too rich for your tastes, you can get their Captain boot or just about any of the other boots that are almost all $199. Those ones aren't made in America, like the Vanguard and the Logger, another boot from Thursday that are. Those are the only US made ones. Whatever you get from Thursday, it's gonna be well under 300 bucks, so it's a, it's a really good pick, especially if you value made in America. Next up is Red Wing Heritage, another all American boot. They did experience a depressing but understandable price jump during the pandemic. Everything increased about $30. Uh, so their iron ranges are not under 300 bucks, but their famous mock toe boots still are currently at the time of filming, $299.99. More expensive than the Thursdays, but this is still really great value for American made. And Red Wing, the company, has been around for over 100 years. They're still headquartered in Minnesota. They own their own tannery in Minnesota, which make all of their very thick and hardy leathers, and they age really, really beautifully. The 875 Mock Toe is the brand's most iconic boot, I think. It's in this kind of vibrant golden orange leather, and it's a staple of both job sites and streetwear. There's no stopping this boot, and it deserves the hype. It was actually my first pair of boots I ever bought. I got a gray pair, and this is the boot that launched, I mean, it basically launched this whole channel business thing I have, right? My love of Red Wing endures forever, and they have a couple of other boots for under 300 bucks as well that are made with stitch down construction, like the Weekend at Chelsea and Chucker. And their classic Chelsea boot as well is under 300 bucks for now as well. Number three, Adelante is not talked about nearly enough. First of all, it's maybe the best brand period for people with wide or narrow or big feet. These guys make all of their footwear to order. And you can get them in C and D and E all the way up to quadruple E and the sizes go up to 17. I've had many guys email me saying that they could never get a pair of boots that fit until they found out about Adelante. And I actually went to the facility in Guatemala to make my own boots last year, which you should watch that video up there somewhere. Uh, it's a really cool company. That was a really cool experience. Atlante was founded by a couple of Americans with backgrounds in aid work. Their goal was to improve the standard of living for their shoemakers. So all their employees make double the standard wage in the area. They also have health insurance, all this really cool stuff that does a really good job of doing away with the notion of my boots must be made in a sweatshop if they're made in Guatemala, right? Like the lace-up boot that I have is the Havana boot for $285. They're Goodyear welted, full green leather, all the bells and whistles that you would want from a quality pair of boots. And what's also really cool is that they send you a video of your boot being made so you can see your craftspeople and the people you're employing and the people who are using their skills to give you seriously solid boots. So you can like kind of see them as your boots are getting made. So there's a really nice level of involvement that you get there. Uh, very, very solid company, you should check them out. Next up is Beckett Simonon. Really good boots, really good price. The downside with this brand is the reason they're cheap is that they're made to order. Adelante's get ready for you in a week or two, but this company, once you purchase them, you're waiting a few weeks to probably a few months to get them, depending on how quickly they fill their minimum. 
It's a little annoying, but the price is very, very good. The price is not annoying. The Dalla Capto boot that I own is 239 bucks. And I have this discount code with them, Stride, which gives you 20% off and brings the price to under 200 bucks, which is very thoroughly ludicrous as far as prices go. They're made with full grain Italian calf skin from a tannery that's gold rated by the leather working group. What that means is you don't have to worry about their tanning processes polluting the local environment, which is something that's like super common in a lot of tanneries uh, in like India, like Kanpur, India, and places where tanneries are less regulated or tend to be. These boots are Blake stitched, which makes them lighter and more flexible than the other boots I've mentioned so far. It's a little bit harder to resole a Blake stitch, but it is far from impossible. Like most cobblers can still do it if you just call them and make sure they have the equipment. They've got a nice leather outsole as well that I'm a big fan of. I used to not like leather outsoles because they're not crazy grippy, but with wear, they get pretty grippy. And they're also really comfortable and soft. And I think leather soles are really cool. The boots are also fully leather lined, which the Thursday boots are, but the Red Wings are not. And the aesthetic is really versatile too. It's a solid beater boot. You can dress up and dress down. Uh, I'm a really big fan. We've also reviewed their Jodhpur boot on this channel before. Just about all their boots are the same price and take the discount code if you want to try something else. The wait is long for Beckett Simonon, but it is worth it. Next up is Helm, which I put in my most underrated boot brands video that you can check out if you want up there. The trouble with Helm is that every time I visit their website, their prices have changed by like a hundred bucks. I've seen this exact same boot selling for under 300 bucks and over 400 bucks. At the moment though, a lot of their very good boots uh, under 300 bucks and I have a discount code for 15% off for these guys as well. I haven't spoken to the company in years but I checked the code still works uh, so you know hopefully that doesn't bother them that people start using it again. Helm boots you can get for $295 a lot of great boots like the Zin which is my favorite black boot. It's a really good solid service boot that has a bit of a modern edge to it. it comes in a few colors as well. The signature thing with Helm is they use a white rubber midsole that you can see when you're wearing them. So most of their boots have this like funky white strip under the sole that I, I really like. It's really a nice touch. It makes them look a little, little bit interesting, a bit more modern and edgy. They're also made with a Blake Rapid Stitch, which is kind of rare. It combines the lighter weight of a Blake Stitch with the water resistance of a Goodyear Welt, or at least it's more water resistant than your typical Blake Stitch. They've also got some laceless boots and some crepe sole boots, all under 300 bucks for now. If you like them, run, don't walk to their site because God knows when the prices are going to change again. Currently, you can get them for under 300 bucks. Next is a brand that I don't talk about anywhere near enough. The company is Miamin. When I reviewed them a few years ago, they didn't have many boots, so I didn't pay them a whole lot of attention. But today, Miamin has a really good variety of footwear for under $300. They've even got whole cut Chelsea's, which costs a lot of money to make because they're made with one piece of leather. And it's hard to find them at, at a reasonable price, right? Like the best known example might be RM Williams boots, and they sell their whole cut Chelsea's for over 500 bucks. Mirmans are $240. They've also got plenty of lace-up boots. The leather comes from well-known tanneries like Britain CF Stead, or globally recognized leather. Why are they so inexpensive? They're made in China, that is why. If you are okay with having top-of-the-line materials in boots that happen to have been assembled and stitched in China, it is hard to go wrong with these Goodyear welted, water-resistant, full-grain leather boots from Mirman. Give them a look. Next, I'm doing Urban Shepherd. This brand has had a tumultuous few years. They had to shut down their US operations. You can only order them from Europe now, but they'll cost you at the moment 195 euros, which is just a little over 200 bucks USD, and the shipping to the US is like 35 euros. So when all is said and done, they're, they're well under 300 bucks, like under 250 bucks. The company has a cool story. They're designed and handcrafted at a small fifth generation family owned workshop in Benedita, Portugal, which is apparently the traditional home of Portuguese shoemaking. And they're all made with leather from local tanneries in Alcanena, which apparently is the traditional home of Portuguese leather production. The waxy calf skin is a really cool leather that ages beautifully. They are Goodyear welted. The outsole is extremely soft as well. Not everybody likes the red stitching on these boots, but they actually got enough complaints about it that they offer versions without that now. So there's not a lot to complain about with these traditional, like they're less sleek and urban than like Thursday boots, but they have a cool look that has garnered a lot of fans. I'm always getting emails about Urban Shepherd, which is very surprising. I didn't know they were that popular, but they are very beloved by a lot of folks. So you can check those out for something a little bit different. Oliver Cabell is next on the list with their Chelsea boots that cost under $300. This brand might be best known for their very good minimalist white sneakers I've reviewed. But their boots are no slouch. These Chelsea's are made in Italy with Italian suede lined with Italian vegetable tan leather. They're really nice soft crepe outsole as well. And they're loved by many for right now, they're 199 bucks. 
This is another brand that changes prices a fair bit, but they told me this is a permanent price for them. So it looks like there's another $199 boot on the market. I've worn their Chelsea's for a while. I've never gotten good footage of them, but uh, they look like this though. And I, I actually do wear them a fair amount because the crepe sole is a nice comfy touch you don't always see. But the shoes are very good. So if you want to roll the dice, it is hard to say no to the price of Oliver Cabell. The materials are pretty good quality. All right, what if you want a pair of boots you can work in and you want them made in America? Can you get them for under 300 bucks? You can and should head to Thorogood, who still make their heritage at Mock Toe for under $300. It was under 200 for a minute, but it no longer is. But at like roughly 250, you can get a great work boot from this company. It has a shock absorbing footbed that you can remove if you need to sub it out with a custom orthotic or something, which is really good for guys on their feet all day. The upper is attached to the sole with a storm welt. So it's like an extra water resistant kind of Goodyear welt, which is already very water resistant. The leather isn't like the best on earth, but it still does age pretty well. There are a lot of good pictures of old thorough goods out there. I'm not crazy about the excessive stitching and branding, but it definitely holds up to all manner of abuse. And like I said, it's made in the USA and in union organized factories to boot. So a lot of people have thorough good very close to their heart. The last entry on this list goes to a little known Italian brand that I think deserves more love. They're called Astaflex. Very strange brand, very bad name. They don't have much info in English on their website, but I was able to figure out that this company is run by a guy called Fabio Travanzoli, whose family has been making shoes in Northern Italy since the 19th century. They've got a big emphasis on soft crepe soles as well and flexible construction. My Bitflex Chelsea boots are made with a very rare construction method called ideal stitching, which is sort of like a stitch down, but the, the long and short of it is they can be resold. They're also very comfortable. They're roomier than your usual Chelsea. They're a little like flatter and wider at the toe for a nice casual look. And they're somehow 215 bucks. I've worn them, I've reviewed them. I can't work out why they're so cheap, but I found them to be really superb boots and you can get them at Huckberry uh, in the link in the description below. All these have links in the description below, by the way. All right, so those are the 10 best boot brands I've found for under $300. I thought I'd end the video at 10, but there are a couple of other brands that I put into an article. So that's in the description below if you wanna head there. I've got like all these brands I've mentioned already uh, and some nice pictures and also some extra brands if you wanna check it out and learn more. But otherwise, those are the new best boots for under 300 bucks. Let me know in the description below if you've got any of these and why, which one you're interested in. Uh, most of them have multiple models for under $300. I just kind of selected my favorites, but there's plenty of good stuff there. So check it out. Uh, and also subscribe if you just wind up here, because I got a lot more boot reviews and comparisons and roundups and also some stuff about other like, you know, jackets and jeans and stuff that's made to last for a long time. So uh, subscribe if that's what you want to see and um, I'll see you next time.